what is the rig count at the moment? Because some analysts believe that if there's a rig decline, then there's also a decline in uh, shale oil output. That's a very good question. If we rewind the clock back to May, uh, we had about 300 operational rigs stateside. As we speak uh, while recording this program in, uh, in October 2016, we, the rig count is slowly, it's, it's crept past 500. So in a short space of five months, you can see where the, where the trajectory is. And I would suspect that we would be well clear of 550 uh, fairly soon. And what that means is that drilling is back on in the US. And if we look at the figures from last Friday, well, there we go. We had about 553 rigs uh, in the US. The count is up for 14, up by 14. And, but of course, there's a caveat. These are both oil and gas rigs. There's no, no split here. And what this tells us is that slowly and slowly it's creeping up. Now, I've been observing the Baker Hughes rig count for, you know, pro since May onwards. And if you look at it, ev ever since then, we've had like four rigs, five rigs, slowly and slowly. Keep. And now we're into double figures. So last week we had 14 more rigs. So that gives you a flavor of where the rig count is going. And essentially the, the anecdotal evidence that I have from law firms in, in Chicago and Houston is that a lot of these guys, you, you need lawyers to sign these, uh, these papers to drill a hole in the ground. Yeah. And what these guys are saying is that drilling is firmly back on. It's not back to the boom times where each week we had 20 or 50 odd rigs being, being added, but we're certainly by, you know, adding somewhere between five and 15 each week. So before, when uh, was it OPEX that you said managed to shut down some of the mummy daddy uh, oil rigs and they... Um, yeah, that, those were the fringe players. So, well, essentially the loss of rigs were some of the fringe players. Uh, and these are the guys who entered and paid way too much for the acreages and, and are the ones who happen to be in distress. So yes, bankruptcies have risen uh, stateside, but the, the field seems to be leveling off because... At, some, at one point, if you rewind the clock back three years, we had uh, well in excess of around 900 to 1,000 rigs uh, operational, and that got nearly halved uh, in a short space of 18 months as bankruptcies of some of these smaller players rose. So the market is recovering, but it's recovering from a very low base. What does it mean when, when we say we have a declining oil rig rate? A declining rig rate would mean that relative to last week and last year, we are uh, down a few rigs. Now, it would be a completely declining rate if both the yearly and the weekly assessment pointed to a negative direction. Often it happens that there's a little bit of a disconnect that the yearly count would be in negative territory, which it is now, and the weekly count would be in positive territory. And for both factors to reconcile, it, it takes a few months. But I would say that given the, the sort of distress that we saw in, in the, not just in the US market, but in the global market, for the yearly count to reflect an uptick in the number of uh, rigs, it would take another eight, eight to 10 months. Because if you keep looking backwards, 12 months, so, so hypothetically, if you're looking at October 2015 or September 2014, and, and so on and so forth, we take on a 13 month basis and we keep going back and back. The rig count was, was pretty high, I was at historic highs in June 2014. So it'll take a bit of time to recover. But the weekly indicator, as long as that stays in the green and there's more and more week-on-week -week rigs, then that will act as a counterbalance to the sentiment. Is there a time lag between an increase or decrease in rig counts in the USA and actual levels of production? Almost oh, definitely, because what you would see is that the, the time lag would occur because some of the rigs might have been, been drilled, they might well be on stream but might have been mothballed. So you will see some, some disparity in the data. It, it, just, just because the number of rigs are down doesn't mean that production will come down. And just because production is up doesn't necessarily mean that, that the rig count will be up. Uh, I, I would give a classic example of, of Western Canada. The rig count fell, but the production actually rose because some of the producers were trying to make do with fewer rigs. So it's, the, the connect is not, uh, not, not blatantly obvious. Of course, the logic says that when rigs fall, the production should fall as well, but it's not as simple as that.